So today I'm going to show you how you can add a blend pot to a Parker Fly electric guitar. Um, you know, the way the Parker is originally wired, it's got a, if you know anything about the Parker Fly, it's got a master volume control that is right here. And then the magnetic volume control is here, the magnetic pickups. Then you have the magnetic tone control. And then over here you have a, a pot that is a concentric pot. The uh, lower knob is the tone control for the piezos. And then the uh, upper knob is the, tone, the uh, volume control for the piezo pickups. And uh, I found that I never really used the master volume control, so what I decided to do one day is just take that out of there. And so I removed it, and it's just a dual pot, 10K, um, 10K audio pot, I believe. Yeah, it's 10K audio. And so I just took that out and move the magnetic volume control, the magnetic pickup volume control to here and then I decided to put a blend pot in its place and that's pretty simple to do. All I gotta do is if you see on the schematic here you move the black and white bridge wire and the neck red and green wire and you run it through the blend pot which I got off Stu Mac. It's a 500K dual pot. That's a blend pot and it has a center detent so when it's in the middle you're getting equal signal from the neck and bridge and uh, then you know you can blend how much of the bridge or neck you have when you have the pickup switch in the middle position when you have both pickups on and that's pretty cool. It works out really nice. Um, you can get a little more range of tones out of the thing and this is a nice little mod you can do that doesn't modify the look of your guitar. You don't have to drill another you know, hole or anything in your, in your guitar. You can keep it looking original and uh, I'll do a little video of me putting this thing back together. Don't let the ribbon cable scare you. They're, it's not really as delicate or scary as it might look. It's just a, a different way of doing things than you know your run-of-the-mill guitar. Oh and then when you remove the master volume you have to jumper two of those connections together so circuit-wise it's as if the volume control is you know 100% on so I'll do the uh, part where I'm putting it back together following this. Alright, so to get this thing back together, you just put this little printed circuit board down on here under these two little standoffs. And you put the screws back in there. one screw. I don't tighten them down all the way until I get both of them in there. And there's the other one. There's one screw, two screws. You don't need to like crank them down like ridiculously tight just so they're tight. <clears throat> And you stick these little ribbon cables back in these little connectors here. Just push them in until they stop. You don't have to be too rough with them. And you just push this on there like that. Makes a connection. Same thing with this side. And snap that on there. That's connected. And you're basically done. All you do is stick the cover back on there back cover once you're uh, 
satisfy that it's working to your liking. Back cover goes back on here. It's a little tricky lineup because this little LED uh, jewel, I guess we'll call it, has to go over the LED. But yeah, and you put all the screws back on once you've verified it's working and everything. And it's really a really simple mod to do. It only took me, oh, well, maybe about an hour. A little tricky desoldering this ribbon cable off the pot. <clears throat> I was afraid I might break this or mess it up. But it's, it's a lot more durable than you might think. I don't know if I don't know if this plastic's gotten hardened over the years, if it's gotten more brittle, but um, there's not really much to worry about breaking this. I mean, as long as you're careful, you're not going to break this ribbon cable. But yeah, it is a pain in the butt. Like, you have to replace a switch or a pot, you know, to desolder off this cable. You got to be very careful. Otherwise, you might end up having to hardwire the whole thing, which some people have had to do, like if this little board goes bad, you're kind of up the creek as far as that goes. You can't really get a replacement. Although you might be able to repair this. There's really only a couple things that can go bad on it. But anyways, I'm getting off track there. So that's pretty much it. And then um, I like to put the original pot in a little baggie and a little piece of foam Uh, a little piece of foam over this and then I just stick it back in the cavity so that if I ever go to you know say I want to just put this back to the way it was originally I, I have everything right in the guitar already and I can just solder it back together oh yes and the one thing I forgot to mention is I had to add a little jumper where these where the magnetic pickup pot was originally, I had to add a little jumper that comes over here to the new location of the magnetic pickup volume switch. So that's just a matter of getting a few wires and extending the connection from this point on the ribbon cable to the new location of the pot. So really pretty simple. Um, don't let it scare you because it's got all these ribbon cables and all this stuff in there. It's it's just a different way of doing things. It's not it's not like it's some fragile thing that's going to break if you touch it. It's not that fragile. So, um, pretty simple. Hope you got something out of that. If you're thinking about modifying your Parker Fly, um, this is one thing you can do to get a little more range of sounds out of it without modifying your guitar and keep it original looking. You don't have to drill any holes through it. You know, if you don't mind drilling a hole through there, there's a couple more mods you could do. But um, you know, I'm just I'm sticking with this one. So there you have it. Hope you got something out of it. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.